You may be tempted to try and avoid using the brakes as much as possible, but there are two separate and equally important uses for the brakes in a rally car. The most obvious use is to slow down to a speed at which the car can take the next corner without crashing. The second, less obvious reason is to manage weight transfer before, during or even after cornering. Applying the brakes transfers more of the weight of the car over the front wheels, pressing the tyres against the road, giving them increased grip. The trade-off is that the rear tyres have less of the car's weight applied to them, resulting in less grip. Slowing the car down should only be done while the car is moving in a straight line. All four wheels don't need to be pointing forward, but the direction of travel should be as straight as possible. You should apply the maximum braking force without the front wheels locking. Depending on the corner you are approaching, you may need to partially lock the rear wheels to induce oversteer. Judging braking points correctly allows you to brake smoothly and continuously until the turn-in point, where you can release the brake and turn for the corner. Releasing the brake at the turn-in point means that the weight will have already been transferred to the front wheels when you turn, giving increased traction. You must always take the characteristics of the car and the road into account when braking. As well as the level of grip and characteristics of the road, many other factors can affect weight transfer. This can load or unload each tyre, affecting the amount of grip available and the distance required to slow down. Some examples are as follows. When travelling uphill, the effect of gravity working against the car results in shorter braking distances. The opposite is true when travelling downhill. When braking on a loose surface, reduced grip results in longer braking distances. The level of grip is often variable from corner to corner, so it is usually prudent to leave a margin for error. When braking on clean, dry tarmac, you will have shorter braking distances, as there is generally more grip, the car will tend to remain more stable than on loose surfaces. Conditions such as wet weather, mud on the road or ice will result in longer braking distances. The overall weight of the car has a dramatic effect. Heavier cars take much longer to slow down than lighter cars. If the wheels are inadvertently locking during braking, the wheels will slide across the surface rather than slowing the car down. So remember, use the brakes to slow the car down to a speed at which it can take the next corner without crashing and to manage weight transfer before, during or after cornering. Always be aware of the road conditions and adjust your braking distances accordingly. The term left foot braking is often misunderstood as simply using your left foot rather than your right foot to operate the brake pedal. While that fact is true, it only scratches the surface in explaining the technique. If braking, accelerating and steering are the tools used to manage weight transfer, left foot braking is the tool for fine adjustment. Using your left foot on the brake pedal and your right foot on the accelerator has a number of advantages. The amount of time taken between pressing the accelerator and brake pedals is significantly reduced compared to using your right foot only. This means that fractions of a second are saved every time you swap from accelerating to braking and back again. If you apply a small amount of brake force while accelerating, particularly in a front-wheel drive car, the load that the engine and drivetrain has to work against causes the differential to tighten. This spreads the power across both wheels, making it less likely to spin one of those wheels due to low grip, therefore giving you more driving traction out of corners. Weight transfer can be fine-tuned mid-corner by adjusting the amount of brake force versus the amount of throttle applied. A little more brake input transfers weight forward, giving more traction on the front wheels to help the car turn in. A little more throttle corrects oversteer if the car is sliding too much. The car can be balanced at the edge of traction throughout a corner using this method. Brake balance adjustment can be used in conjunction with left foot braking to tune the balance between understeer and oversteer. 
Some of these principles still apply if you use your right foot on the brake, but clearly the speed at which you can move between pedals becomes a factor. Cars that require the clutch to be engaged in order to change gear usually prevent the use of left foot braking for slowing the car down from high speed. However, the technique can still be applied through a corner. Remember, left foot braking allows you to quickly switch between acceleration and braking and is a fantastic technique for fine-tuning the weight transfer of the car. Tires operate at their optimum with a certain amount of wheel spin. On gravel, wheel spin lets the tread of the tire move the loose material on the road surface and puts the tire in contact with the harder surface underneath, where the most grip can be found. However, excessive wheel spin prevents the tires from achieving their maximum grip potential, and so it's not always appropriate to floor the accelerator. The technique used to combat excessive wheel spin is known as feathering the throttle and is used primarily when exiting a corner to achieve maximum grip and therefore acceleration. Instead of using the accelerator pedal as an on-off switch, you can modulate the throttle input to find the most grip. The amount of throttle input required to do this will vary from surface to surface and even from corner to corner, so it is more a case of feeling for the grip than knowing exactly how much throttle to apply. As with braking, the inclination of the road ahead has an impact on the speed at which a car can accelerate. When travelling uphill, the car has to pull its weight against gravity and will accelerate more slowly than on a flat surface. Travelling downhill will allow the car to accelerate more quickly. Perhaps less obvious is the effect of altitude on the car. At high altitude, such as the mountain ranges that rally stages and hill climbs often traverse, the car will have relatively less power than at lower altitude. Engines need air to burn fuel, and so if more air goes in, more fuel can go in and more power can be produced. As the air density reduces with altitude, power output also reduces. Bear this in mind when you are driving up Pikes Peak, as the change in altitude is one of the most dramatic in motorsport. 